Uh, and I'm here. Uh, we've been talking McLaren all day long. There's a reason for that. Zach Brown's here. He's brought a couple of his young drivers, Mika Hakkinen, and a couple of his old drivers, and a new driver now, in, uh, in uh, a guy called Mario. And so Mario's in the mix for a potential McLaren drive or return to racing. But let's talk McLaren, because I've got Dan Picani alongside me, and he knows his McLarens, because he's part of the, de the deal here in San Francisco. And we've got a, a, an exhibition, if you will, of current production McLaren cars out on track, which I'm very excited about. One of the great stories, I think, and I think Bruce McLaren, I was saying, when he was looking down on the Formula One um, you know, exhibition earlier, he'd be proud. But I think he'd be just as proud to see what the company has done in this realm in this production realm, to come into this sphere of sports car, high-end racing car, sports cars, is no mean feat when you do it against the likes of Ferrari, Lamborghini, and so on, Maserati, but they've done it, and they've done it with a plume, and they've succeeded, they've won Le Mans, and now these cars speak for themselves. Absolutely. Um, it's so nice to have the mix of cars here with the, with the old cars, the historic cars, the classic cars, and our current cars. Um, you know, we're fortunate enough to be in the Bay Area in between two awesome racetracks that uh, we get to uh, get a lot of track time with our clients and it just affords us the um, great, great opportunity to enjoy these vehicles and uh, enjoy the clients and the atmosphere that we're dealing with here. And is it me or is McLaren as a production base here in the States growing exponentially? I remember one of my friends started working for McLaren in New York and then came down to Dallas. But it seems now that I see a lot more McLarens both at events and racing, obviously, but, um, but also on the streets. It seems like McLaren is now starting to make its mark. Definitely are. Um, you know, we've got a really good base of dealers uh, throughout the U.S. And of course, we have our two dealers here in San Francisco and in Walnut Creek. Uh, you know, which uh, you know are able to service our clients, selling service, and, and again keeping these cars on the road. Um, again, we do between our dealer groups run a lot of track days, and again, um, super happy to see that our, our clients are out on track, enjoying their cars. You know, both track and on street. And yeah, we're growing in numbers. I mean, we've been in the Bay Area now, McLaren, since 2011. And it is awesome to see the footprint that we have, uh, you know, now established with McLaren. It's a, uh, you know, it, it's hard for me. I got to pinch myself every now and then because it's just, a, it's a wonderful brand. Clients are awesome. Manufacturer, dealer network, you know, I really, you know, of course I'm biased, <laughs> but again, it, you know, it's, it's enjoyable. Uh, you know, we're looking now, you know, we've got, We've got about 16 of our clients on uh, track right now. Uh, we've got P1 GTR, uh, P1s, uh, got our Aturas out there, uh, 720s, 720S Spiders, 765 LTs, road going Senna's. It, it's an exciting, exciting group and, uh, of, of cars that, uh, again, you know, I get to enjoy on a daily basis, you know, as part of my uh, work that I do. Now, the 650 uh, came before, obviously, the 720, but they both went straight into racing. I mean, they're production-based, but they went into a racing setup uh, and were raced in GT and yes. around the world. Yeah, the, um, the sprint car. Racing? Sprint car, yeah, Yeah, basically. the sprint car, yeah. The McLaren, uh, the McLaren GT guys in uh, the UK uh, come out with a great product. Uh, they did go into the 650 with the um, GT car that they ran in a bunch of different series, both the US and in uh, the UK. Um, and then they morphed into with the GT4, the uh, 570S GT4. Um, that, of course, ran in the state in the IMSA series and the Pirelli Challenge series for a yep. few years. Um, and now we've actually got the 720 GT3 running and uh, in, in really successful. So again, you know, in a short amount of time, I think that, you know, we're really, really making our mark and um, showing, you know, the clients, the public, and everybody out there, their uh, motorsports enthusiasts, what brand this is, and, you know, to steal your words, you know, what Dennis was really about 
Uh, you know, Bruce McLaren, sorry. Uh, well, with Ron Bruce, Dennis, to be honest, Ron on the Dennis road. Ron Dennis, too. Yeah. So, exactly. So, I mean, because we, you know. He was a very much an instrumental part, while he was head of Formula One for McLaren, of, of making sure that the road cars, and I was about to ask you about that, because I think Ron Dennis had a big hand in that. But, yeah, like I said, Bruce McLaren, I think, would be proud. But, but Ron Dennis, I, I remember when, when the idea came out, and, and I was involved in Formula One at the time, and I thought, that's a crazy idea. Why would you build a sports car when you are known as a Formula One team and Ferrari are already in that space? Lamborghini are already in that space. How can you build out in a market like that and you know, effectively, boldfacedly say, well, we're here and we're different? But they pulled it off. And I don't know, you're up close with these cars and you know that people will make those comparisons with Ferraris, with Lamborghinis, and even with Porsche. But what to you, um, makes the McLaren so different, if not uh, um, unique? Well, I guess the uniqueness has to come out there. The technology that McLaren comes with, of course, derived out of their F1 cars. You know, you see that directly in the car. You know, McLaren doesn't build anything that isn't necessary into their car. It's all about saving weight um, and performance. And so that, I believe, is it really attracts our clients, especially the technical aspect of it, just with, you know, the hydraulic suspension, the active aero, you know, the, all this technology goes into the car. Uh, our clients enjoy that, you know. And also the fact that any one of these McLarens, when it gets down to it, for the most part, you know, maybe a Senna GTR, no, but any of our road going cars, you can go to dinner in it. You could drive yeah. to LA in it. You know, they're comfortable cars. They have the different settings in it so that they're, they're still a, a, a very viable uh, road going car. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit because people who aren't um, au fait that, that much with supercars, as it were, may not know that. But you can basically set the suspension, as we see here, to be either controllable or get the tail out. And, and what I'm getting at is that these cars have, have those settings where you literally can be on, not cruise control, but you can have a setting where the car is in a sport mode where it's lower, where the suspension uh, gives you, the steering gives you more feedback and so on and so forth. Uh, talk a little bit about that, because as you say, or, you know, let's say you're not a performance driver and, and maybe your daughter or your son, who you don't want to be going crazy in it, is just going to the shops in it and doesn't need all the modes. What, tell us about that. Yeah, exactly. So there are different settings for gearbox, uh, suspension. You've got the soft setting, sport setting, and track setting. And you can mix those with the uh, gearbox and engine management as well. So you can have the car in the performance portion on the engine management and gearbox shifting, but still have the suspension in the comfort mode, you know? And the other thing too about these cars is when you get in them, you put them in, and you could drive the car in automatic, okay? It's a seven-spirit DTC gearbox that you can just jump in it, leave it in auto, drive the car, does the computers do all the work for you, everything else, very comfortable, very easy going for traffic and everything else. So it has that portion of it. And then, of course, you could drive it to the track, show up, put it in the proper settings to stiffen up the suspension, change the mapping on the engine and uh, gearbox setting, and go out and have a great time on track. Yeah, and I get the feeling that McLaren's ethos, and correct me if I'm wrong, is more about design and innovation and technology than it is about 0 to 60 and well we've got the you know, the highest powered engine and the you know it, it's less about the stats and more about design and innovation and technology. And you're correct there. And again, like I said, they, you know everything that they do is for a purpose. I mean, if you want to get technical, the power steering pump on the vehicles that have the hydraulic suspension and the active suspension, that duels is the power steering pump, okay, to save weight. So McLaren designed this to, if you're going in a straight line, you can make suspension settings because you don't want to be doing them in a turn anyway. No. And then, otherwise, that same pump is used as a power steering pump. So it's dual purpose, saves weight, engineering, space, and everything else. So That's clever, it, yeah. It, it, it really is. It, it, they're innovative. And, you know, you got the carbon fiber chassis tub, the safety aspect of that. 
the lightweight. It, it, it's 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 really um, it's amazing of what they've come up and how quickly they are able to uh, adapt to new products. I mean, if you look at our uh, new Atura, yeah. that is a hybrid vehicle. It's uh, first uh, V6 twin turbo that Marin's going to have in a production car. Still putting over 670 horsepower. Um, again, very good, very comfortable, easy to get in and out of vehicle. Again, can drive in the different settings. Got the fuel economy there. Gets still, I believe, about 19 miles on the E mode. You know, so again, multi use vehicle. And for those of uh, the fans that are here at Laguna Seca this weekend or, or watching today on the live stream and thinking of coming tomorrow, um, tell us where they can go and what they can look at while, while they're here. So while we're here, we've got a couple of sets. Of course, we have our uh, luxury collection group, is, which is our Price Sims Automotive uh, dealership family that we have. And we have our McLarens there with Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces, and Bentley. And that is over off right next to the F1 paddock. Yep. Okay, so we're, we're situated over there. Uh, McLaren Corporate is off into the center, along with Ogara. They have some vehicles on display. And we also got in the middle section by the, um, coming off of turn 10, is a, a, another of the ultimate series that we have there, which is basically Elva, Senna, P1 and P1 GTR. And so there's a lot to work at. Come and talk with our, our sales guys, our parts guys. We've got apparel over there for sale for the people that want it. Um, and ask questions. It, it's, it's um, what's your favorite? My favorite car? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. I know. Um, the, I have to say the P1. Okay. Okay. Um, the P1, as we're looking, looking on at the it. screen here at the beautiful volcano yellow. It's a pretty yellow. You know, car, beautiful um, spec P1. Um, just the, 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 and again, you're talking technology, hybrid car, 903 horsepower. 903? 903 combined wow. horsepower between the V8 and the hybrid motor. That's amazing. Um, has a boost mode has race mode um, it it you get all the um, interior in the cockpit with the boost and in the turbos winding up you get all that engaged feeling in the car so it's a very driver's car mm -hmm. and it's in it's brutal well don i want to talk to you for the rest of the day but come back tomorrow and we'll do it again because i want to talk more mclaren i'll get more genned up because i'll have more questions then but Don Pocacani, uh, I'll say it again. Let me get my, your last name right again. Pocani, you got it. Pocani, I got it. Yeah. So thank you for coming in. Uh, let's head down to um, Taylor because I believe she's got a racing driver in the one and only Pato Award. A racing driver, you could say. I've got a legendary one, and one that's coming up. Pato Award, you're out here. You're driving some incredible cars with some other legendary athletes. How is it to be out here? Oh, it's awesome. I love, I love coming to this event. I, uh, I, I had the joy of coming here last year, and I got to drive uh, Mika's Formula One uh, World Championship winning car, V10. I mean, the thing was an absolute machine, right? And today I get to drive this uh, McLaren. I, I believe it's the MP45B. Uh, which was driven by Ayrton Senna 1990. So I'm really looking forward to the experience. It's probably going to be an absolute beast. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to get out there. And what do you think about this track? Obviously, it's legendary for a lot of people, a lot of different corners on it. What's the most exciting part for you? Oh, it's awesome. I get, we, I get to race here in IndyCar every year, and um, it's a beautiful circuit. Lots of history. Uh, everybody I talk to always knows Laguna Seca, everybody knows about it, and, and everybody's driven it either on Gran Turismo 5 or on the Xbox or, you know, whatever it might be. So it's uh, it's awesome to be here and such a privilege to be able to be driving at this beautiful circuit. Last question. Amazing cars here, tons of them. If you could have one, unlimited budget, what would it be? Ooh. If I could have one, um, I'd, I'd have to pick one of these Formula One cars, but I don't know which one to pick out. Uh, you'd probably you probably take either the one that I'm about to take out or one of the more modern Formula One cars because they are just awesome pieces of machines. Absolutely. Maybe both. 
Unlimited yeah. budget, right? Yeah. Why not both? <laughs> All right, well, we're going to see him out on the track in just a couple minutes, so we'll send it back up to you, Johnny.